Welcome to London. I'm gonna tell you about the biggest mistakes I always see tourists make when they come to the city so that you know about them and you don't make them yourself. By the way, I'm Jess, I run Love in London and we help tourists who visit London like they live here. And if it's your first time coming to the city, I have a special freebie for you, so make sure you watch to the end of the video to get it. Ooh. By far the biggest mistake I hear from London tourists is that they didn't realize how big that London is. London is actually the biggest city in Western Europe and for comparison, we have 9 million people here and the second biggest city is Berlin with just 3.4 million. And even Paris only has two. So you can fit a bunch of Parises into London. That just goes to show how massive that this city is. So when you're here, be prepared to hop on public transport, whether it's the riverboat, the tube, the bus, anything, so you can make sure you're exploring as much of London as possible. Which leads us to the next mistake. Now going beyond the very touristy areas. I see a lot of tourists coming for a few days and not going beyond a few walks where the major tourist attractions are. And listen, do the tourist attractions, that's fine. But if you only do that, you are missing out on a whole entire London that us Londoners love and that I definitely think you should experience. So if you wanna get out of central London, I've got a bunch of amazing video guides that will tell you some great things to do a little bit more uh, on the outskirts of the city. And I will link those videos in the description box of this video. Not grouping your activities together by area. I see a lot of tourists that don't realize, as mentioned before, how big London is. So they don't plan in advance to do the same things in the same area in one day, which means you could spend tons of time traipsing around the city on public transport and getting taxis. For example, you don't wanna do Notting Hill in West London on the same day that you're gonna do Shoreditch, which is over here in East London. It's gonna take a ton of time to get there on the tube. So instead, if you do Notting Hill, also pair that with a visit around Kensington. And when you go to Shoreditch, pair that with a visit to the Barbican. If you're struggling with figuring out what things to do in each area of London, I have travel guides that do exactly that for you. It's called the Casual Tourist Guides. I'll leave a link to them in the description box. Thinking you can only go and party on the weekends. There is something going on at night every single day of the week here in London, especially when you're in bustling areas like Shoreditch or Soho, where we are now. So don't think you can't go out if it's a weekday. In fact, the weekdays are super fun to go out because it's a little less crowded. It tends to be more people that actually live in London versus people who come from the outskirts in. Get me out of here. This is my worst nightmare. Not pre-booking your activities and your restaurants ahead of time. Especially if you're coming to London in peak times, like the summer, like it is right now, or around Christmas time, you for sure need to pre-book your activities and your restaurant reservations in advance. You don't want to be wasting precious time waiting in lines for places that you could have actually booked a time slot ahead of time and then you wouldn't have to do all this waiting. For example, the London Eye, you can do that. The same goes for restaurant reservations. If it's important for you to eat well, which it should be, then you wanna make sure you get your reservations in early so you don't miss out on the best dining experiences, especially around central London and on the weekends. Only trying British food when you come to London. Listen, try the full English breakfast, have some fish and chips, get up high and mash, but you are truly missing out if you stick to only British food. That's because London is one of the best cities in the world for international cuisines, and we have amazing restaurants that serve dishes from Italy, Japan, Sri Lanka, the Caribbean, and loads of other places that are all worth trying. So don't stick to only British food, you will definitely be missing out, and I think there are a lot of other cuisines that are actually much better than British food anyway. If you need lots of good local food recommendations, make sure you go to the Love in London shop. I have so many amazing places to eat in my London guides. I am so sorry. Hi, that's I'm okay. Oh, amazing. Your yeah, of course, yeah. Like, inspired our whole vacation. Oh my gosh, amazing. One of the biggest safety mistakes tourists make here in London is not looking both ways when you cross the road. They drive on the left side of the road here, so if you're not used to that, you wanna make sure you look both ways before you cross, or look down at the pavement, because it might be telling you which way you should look before you cross. But just to be safe, look both ways, and then you won't have to get run over. 
buying a paper ticket for traveling on the tube. The daily travel card is such a ripoff, do not buy it. Instead, use a contactless payment method like Google Pay, Apple Pay, or just a contactless debit or credit card to pay. Or if you've got an Oyster already, an Oyster card works too. Those methods of payment have a daily cap, which is automatically applied, which is a lot cheaper than if you were to buy a paper daily travel card. So there's really no reason to buy it. not observing tube etiquette. If you wanna see a Londoner, get very frustrated, but also try to have patience at the same time, stand on the left side of the escalator in a tube station and you'll very quickly hear a, excuse me, from behind. That's because the left lane is the express lane, you keep moving, and if you wanna stand on the escalator, make sure you're standing on the right side. And when you're waiting for a tube, when one arrives, make sure you're not stood in front of the doors. Step to the side, let everybody step off the train first, and then you can get on. Thinking all of London is going to be quintessentially English. A lot of tourists come here and think they're gonna see Londoners running around with top hats on, saying cheerio to everyone, and sweeping chimneys like Bert from Mary Poppins. But actually, London is a lot different from the rest of the UK. It's an incredibly multicultural city with people from all over the world, and we have global influences on the food, the architecture, the people, everything. It's one of the best parts of the city, so make sure you embrace it and enjoy it. Thinking you can predict the London weather. Now, listen, here in England, we have all four seasons, but it can vary significantly from day to day. For example, you might have a day like today where it's hot and sunny and you don't need a jacket, and then literally tomorrow, it could be so cold that you feel like you need a proper winter jacket on. It does vary that much. So check the forecast a couple of days before you come to London, pack according to that, but also pack in case there are any major changes. And if you need any help with your packing and planning what to wear, I have that all in the London packing guide, which I will link in the description box. Leaving the city for a day trip too early in your trip. There is so much to do and see in London that you could be here for weeks exploring and still have not even scratched the surface. So I see a lot of tourists leaving to go on a day trip outside of the city like two days into their trip before they've even really like properly seen anything. My rule of thumb is to not do any day trips unless you're in London for at least seven days. And if you find yourself getting bored of London after a couple of days, you're just not doing it right, sorry. Thinking there is a best time to visit London. You might have a favorite season to come to London, mine is summer, but every time of the year has its pros and cons. For example, summer is gonna be the best chance for getting good weather, but it also means there's gonna be the most crowds and the highest prices but you can come in January where it'll be the lowest prices and the least crowds, but you're also gonna be dealing with dark and cold weather. So it completely depends. In this video, I talk about the pros and cons of coming each month of the year. So have a watch of that after this video to figure out what's gonna be the best time of year for you. Another big mistake London tourists make when they come to the city is to spend any time in Leicester Square. Like, literally, don't spend any time here. London tourists apparently think that this is a great place to come, and they're wrong. Unless you want to experience international cuisine at Pizza Hut, or experience world-class arts and culture, or to get overpriced American candy, a candy shop that's currently being investigated for money laundering, or go to one of the three movie theaters slash casinos in this immediate area. If you want to do those things, you can come to Leicester Square, but otherwise, completely avoid it. M&M's, what is the point? Thinking you can pay in any currency besides British pounds. It's a little bit of a weird one. I don't know why you'd go to a foreign country and try to pay in your own currency, but I've heard it be done. We use Great British Pounds here, and even though we are in Europe, we are not on the Euro. So you can't use Euros here, you can't use American dollars, only use British Pounds. If you find some place that says they will take your home currency, run. 
it is gonna be a huge ripoff. Something is going on there that is really weird. And sometimes if you're paying by card, the machine will ask you if you wanna pay in your home currency or Great British Pounds. Always pick pounds because when it converts to your home currency, it's actually gonna severely rip you off. Now, if you wanna avoid even more mistakes when you come to London, make sure you grab my free London 101 guide. It has everything you need to know before you get here. You can get that by clicking the link in the description box of the video. And also make sure you watch one of my many, many other videos about London before you come, which you can do by clicking one of the boxes around me. These daily paper tickets that you can buy are such a rip off. Oh, that was very New York. Such a rip off. I love crowds.